Well, now I'd like to introduce you to the servo motor. We'll consider applications and features, principle of operation, and also look at continuous rotation servos. This is the servo that's included in the NI MyRio Mechatronics kit. It's the S03N unit from Grand Wing Servotech. Well, to get started, what exactly is a servo? Well, a servo is a feedback control system. The white line conveys the angular position command input, and the shaft rotates to the corresponding angular position in response. So the rotating shaft, also known as a spline, moves to a desired angle according to the command position input. Applications include a variety of actuators and motion control applications. And servos are really ubiquitous in remote controlled airplanes, cars, and boats. For example, on an airplane, servos are used to manipulate the control surfaces, such as the aileron, rudder, and elevator. On a radio-controlled car, it can be used to manipulate the steering wheels. Now let's take a look at the interior of this particular servo unit. I've opened up the backside over here, and this exposes the DC motor and controller board. Here's the DC motor, and the little electronics device corresponds to the controller and motor drive electronics. Again, the white wire is called the command input. The red wire is DC power, which is 4.8 volts to 6 volts, and the black wire is ground. Now I'm going to flip this over and remove the other side, that is the front side of the servo. And here we see the gearbox and spline. Specifically, the motor shaft is right here. We have the inner Vening gears, that would be the gearbox. And then finally, the rotating part that we see on the outside of the servo is called the spline. The motor turns at very high speed, but it has very low torque. After passing through the gearbox, we have relatively low speed, but much higher torque. Not visible here is the potentiometer that's connected to the spline. As the spline turns, the potentiometer turns as well and this is used to sense the spline position as a voltage. Now here's a quick review of the features of this particular servo. The angular position is adjustable over a range of more than 180 degrees using pulse width position control. Apply pulses between 1 and 2 milliseconds, 3 volts to 5 volts, which are active high, and a pulse repetition rate of 50 hertz, or one pulse every 20 milliseconds. 1.5 milliseconds is the neutral or center position for the spline. The supply voltage is 4.8 to 6 volts. 4.8 corresponds to four series connected NICAD batteries, and 6 volts would correspond to four alkaline batteries at 1.5 volts each. Speed and torque varies depending on the power supply that you're using. Here's the values that we have for 4.8 volts, and at 6 volts we get faster speed and also a little more torque. The spline specifically is compatible with the Futaba style spline at 25 teeth, and all of these so-called servo horns, little plastic parts that you can press onto the spline, these are also included with this particular servo. All right, now that we have some idea of what the components of the servo look like, let's review the principle of operation. Everything begins with a command input. This is a series of pulses of specific width which command the intended angular position. These are fed to the controller and motor drive, which in turn controls the DC motor. The DC motor output feeds the gearbox, and the gearbox drives the spline to the desired angle. We call this the response. We have a potentiometer connected up to the spline shaft, and the potentiometer converts that position to a voltage. The intended angular position is compared to the actual angular position by the controller, and then the controller decides what to do about the DC motor. The controller acts to run the motor as needed to make the actual position the same as the intended position. That is, the controller is trying to minimize the position error signal. The controller will spin the motor faster when the air is larger. 
and this is a form of proportional control. Now let's look briefly at the continuous rotation servo. Basic idea here is we break the feedback path and then effectively tell the controller that the spline is always in its neutral position. So in a sense we fix that voltage to a constant. Now when the command input is indicating you want it to be in the neutral position, then the controller says no rotation needed and the motor stays stationary. Now if you say go to 20 degrees, the controller says well we need to start spinning the motor the spline will begin to turn, but since we have no more feedback, the controller keeps thinking that the spline is stuck in the neutral position. And the controller will just go ahead and keep spinning the motor indefinitely. And it will do so at a speed based on the command input. If you commanded a larger angle, it would think it's farther away from neutral and spin the spline more quickly. This particular unit also included in the mechatronics kit is very similar, but it is intended for continuous operation. And this, this particular unit can be used as the basis of a drivetrain. Now one last important point I'd like to make about the continuous rotation servo has to do with the fact that when you command neutral, you expect ideally zero motion. But you still may see some small residual motion, that is the motor is, is maybe trying to turn at a very slow rate. The continuous rotation servo includes a nulling trim pot or potentiometer located right here. So you do have to open up the back to gain access to this. You apply a neutral pulse, 1.50 milliseconds as accurately as you can make it. And then you adjust the trim pot until the motor stops altogether. Note that you could also do this nulling in software.